Hello, everyone, and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. My name is Paulina. I'm the community manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar, where we will be talking about how to launch e-learning in your organization with no budget. As a presenter, I have invited my colleague from Technical Support Department, Arena. How, hi, Arena. How are you doing today? Hello, Paulina. Hello, everyone. I'm doing fine. I'm so happy to be here. Wonderful. So, Arena will talk, talk about a revolutionary update to our existing product, iSpring Free, and actually will show what iSpring Free is all about. And at the end of the webinar, she will upload iSpring generated content to a Moodle LMS, which can be considered to some extent a free learning management system. I also have great news for everyone who can will not be able to sit through the whole session because this session will be recorded and you guys will receive a link to a replay sometime after the webinar but i would like to encourage you to stay till the very end because it's a great opportunity to address your questions directly to our presenter and to do so please submit them in the question box which you will see on the right side of the go to webinar panel Okay, so I think at this point we are ready to begin. So uh, I would like to pass um, the presenter rights over to Arena. And while she is sharing her screen, I would like to talk about four amazing things um, about iSpring Free. So first of all, it is free of charge. And second of all, since it's a PowerPoint-based application, you can create your content in a normal fashion in PowerPoint adding slides, animations, triggers, transitions, etc. And after that, you can enhance your content by adding YouTube videos, um, web objects like web pages, and also, which is more exciting, you can now add quizzes with iSpring Free. The third thing is that you will be able to output all this content to HTML5 format, which will make it available across all devices and um, screen sizes. And the fourth thing, which I love about it, is that it can also output to SCORM 1.2 and 2004, which makes it possible for you to actually monitor how your users are progressing. And a bonus thing about iSpring Free is that it now doesn't have that huge watermark on the content. And I think that's what makes it different from all the free apps available out there. Okay, so I will be silent for now and pass the mic over to Arena. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm happy to start our webinar. I hope everyone can hear me well. If something goes wrong, please feel free to leave your questions in the question box of the webinar, of the GoToWebinar panel. So let's get started. So I just want to make sure if you can see my screen. So I can see it. Perfect. Uh, in this case, I'm super excited to announce a revolutionary update uh, of our product iSpring Free. It was released 11 years ago in significantly changed to match user demands. However, the idea has always remained the same. Even if you do not have a budget <clears throat> for e-learning project at the moment, you can start it quick and easy without any costs. So, uh, to get started, let's quickly go through the outline of our webinar. Today, we will take a closer look at the options available in iSpring Free. We will enhance the PowerPoint presentation with web content and YouTube videos. We will also learn how to create a test and add it to the presentation. And finally, we will turn our presentation into an e-learning course. We will publish it to SCORM format and see how it runs in Moodle, a free open source learning management system. So now it's time to start working on our course. To get started, let's click on the iSpring free shortcut on the desktop. 
Here you can start fresh with a new course or you can open a recent project. To save time, I prepared a fun PowerPoint presentation beforehand, so I will click here to open my project. So, just one second. Before we start, I want to mention that all content that you see in the presentation right now has been created with PowerPoint. So, as you can see, iSpring Free appears as an additional tab in PowerPoint. I can freely use any other PowerPoint features to create courses, for example, animations and triggers. So, <clears throat> Now let's get back to the iSpring free interface. So first, I am super excited to tell you that now iSpring Quizmaker is a part of iSpring free. That means that you can not only teach your students, but also test their knowledge. The next option is YouTube. You can add a YouTube video directly to the, to the slide to make a course even more vivid. To give your courses even more information, you can insert navigable web pages with web object option, for example, Wikipedia articles. Before publishing a course, you can preview it to make sure that it looks perfect on all devices, both desktop and mobile. And finally, here is a publish option. PowerPoint presentations keep all links, animations, and triggers intact. That means that what you see while editing is actually what you will get in the output. With iSpring Free, you can publish your courses to HTML5 format to share it online and to SCORM format to upload to your LMS. So without further ado, let's get into course creation. As I said earlier, I've prepared the presentation using PowerPoint only. Now I will show you how to turn it into e-learning course. So the first thing we are going to do is to add a YouTube video on the slide. So uh, here is a YouTube video that I want my students to watch within the course. I will copy the URL from the address bar and then get back to the PowerPoint. Here I will add a new slide and click on where it says YouTube on the iSpring free ribbon. I will paste the URL to the video link field and click OK. So. So as you can see now, I have a YouTube video added to the slide. We will need to enlarge it to make it play the full screen. So give me just one second. Mm -hmm. So now we can preview it to see what it looks like. I will click on the arrow under the preview button and then click on preview selected slides to preview just one slide. Here we are. This is our YouTube video playing within the course. Let's close it and move on to web object. Let me scroll down to the slide number 11. So uh, here I have images with types of sailing ships. Before my students see these pictures, I want them to read an article on this topic. So I will create a new slide here go back to my browser and copy the URL of the Wikipedia article. I will click on where it says web object and insert my link to, the, <clears throat> to this field. So besides uh, the website, you can add local files and also you can add an embed code. So again, I will just click OK to insert my article on the slide. So. Uh, let's preview this slide and see what it looks like. As you can see, I can scroll it down and read it. So, right in the course. Well, it looks like I am done with the main part of my course. Now I will add a test to check my students' knowledge. To do that, I will scroll down to the very end of the <clears throat> so to the very end of my presentation, and then 
so create a new slide here. As you can see, I already have a quiz edit, but I will delete it to show you how to create a new one. So on this slide, I will click on where it says quiz. So here is the quiz maker studying menu. So here we can choose to create a graded quiz or a survey, and also we can browse our recent project. Today we are going to create a graded quiz to see how well my students perform. First of all, I will create a slide with the title of the quiz and add instructions for my users. So to add the title, let's click on where it says introduction and select intro slide. So here you can type in the name of your quiz and here your description. So give me just one second, I will quickly insert mine. Just one second. Let's quickly preview. So, uh, we will preview it a little bit later. <laughs> okay, so then we will add instructions. I will click on where it says introduction and add instruction slide. As you can see, I already have default text here, so I will go for these instructions. All right, so now I want to tell you about another very useful option in iSpring QuizMaker, which is an info slide. Basically, info slide is an empty slide where you can put any information that you like. It does not contain questions and answers. So let me quickly copy and paste my text here. Just one second. So I will just insert a very short message. All right, and now let's go ahead and add questions. To do that, we click on where it says question. With iSpring Free, you can create three types of questions. They are multiple choice, multiple response, and a short answer question. Let's add our first question, which is multiple choice. In this question, a student should select one correct answer from several alternatives. So here you can type in the text of your question. So I will quickly copy and paste that. And uh, here you can type the text for your answer choices. Just one second. I will need one more alternative for this question, so I will just click here on type to add a new choice. Again, I will just copy the text and insert it here. Now I have four answer choices. In this column, I can select the correct response. So this one is correct, so I selected this one. I will also need an image for this question, so I will click here. and add my image. Here it is. So <clears throat> now I will show you a little trick which is not so obvious. So when the picture is added, click on it and select an option, allow user to zoom picture. It lets, <clears throat> so now let's preview and see what happens and slide. Here is my question. As you can see, I can click on the picture and see it full size. All right. So here on the right, so I will click somewhere on the screen to unselect it. So here on the right, you can see slide options. For multiple choice questions, I can limit the time to, ans to answer the question and also I can shuffle the answer choices. I, today I will go for default settings. At the bottom of the screen, I can edit the feedback message that will pop up after the user answers the question. So to, do, uh, to edit that, click here and insert your text. So today I will go for default text. All right, now let's get back to our question. 
So it looks like I'm done with the multiple choice question. Let's move on and add a multiple response one. So again, I will click on question and add multiple response. In this question, the student should select all the correct answers from several alternatives. To make our quiz interactive, I will use images instead of text, so in the answer choices. To do that, I will delete the default text, click on the picture, and add my pictures. Actually, you can have your text. You can still have your text, but I will delete that because we don't need it now. Here we are. So here on the left, I can select the correct answer choices. Now I will need to let my user zoom the picture. So again, I will click on it and choose allow you select allow user to zoom picture. I will do it for the each image. All right, so uh, here on the left, I will, uh, as you can see, I already selected the correct responses. So you can choose all of them, just one of them, or two, as in my example. So let's now let's take a look at the slide options. So for this question type, you can limit time to answer the question. You can shuffle answers. So you can accept partially correct answers and also you can limit the number of responses. So it means that if you have two correct options, a user won't be able to select more than two variants. As you can see, I cannot select the third one. All right, so, and now let's click submit and see our feedback message. So now let's uh, move on and create a third question type, which is a short answer. Again, click on question and add short answer. So here students should type in a text as an answer, so a word. Now let's insert our question text. And now let's insert the correct responses. I have two more. So uh, in slide options, you can set answers to be case sensitive. Here is a fun fact about this option. If it was not implemented, the course creator will have to type in all possible variants, most likely including this one. But we don't need that because we have this option. So now let's quickly preview this question. As you can see, I can type in my answer here. Here it is. So today we, we've created only three questions, but please remember that you can add more questions of any type. So, all right, it looks like we're done with our questions and now we can take a closer look at the properties tab here on the main ribbon. So in the main properties, you can set the slide size. Please note that we are adding this quiz to a PowerPoint presentation. So it will automatically adjust to the slide of the whole course. If you are creating a standalone quiz, you can specify the slide here. Under quiz scoring, you can set a passing score. I will go for default one. And here are the question properties. So I'm not going to go important point. If we change any settings in this tab, these settings will be applied only to the new questions in the list. For example, if I have four questions and change something here, these settings will be applied only to the fifth question. So existing questions won't be affected. If we want to apply these settings to all questions in the quiz, we can scroll it down and click on apply to all. If you would like to change settings for a particular question later, you can just select it in the list and change your settings and slide properties for these particular questions. And finally, here is the reporting tab. 
In this tab, you can configure the quiz to send quiz results to your email address. This will come in real handy if you don't have a learning management system. In the email, you will see the user's details and how well they performed. To set it up, we will need to close this window for a moment. First, we will click on Introduction and add a user info slide. Here I can choose what questions I want to ask my users. I have name and email chosen, so let's quickly see what it looks like in preview. That's it. So now let's get back to properties, to reporting tab. Here I will select an option, send report to instructor, and type in my email address. Here is my email address. Don't forget to click save. Well, looks like we are all set. We are done with our quiz. So let's quickly preview it. I need to type in my details here. All right, so here are quiz instructions, title. So this is our quiz. Now uh, it looks good. Now we can click save and return to course. I just want to check in with you before we move on to publishing. Please let us know if you have any questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar panel. So we are almost done. The only thing left is to publish our course. But before we finally publish it, let's give it a quality check. To do that, click Preview. So we have a lot of slides in our presentation, so we will have to wait just for a second. All right, here at the top of the preview window, I can make sure that my course looks perfect on all types of devices. Courses created with iSpring are compatible with all modern mobile devices. So, and also in case you don't like something in preview mode, you have a golden opportunity to fix it before finally publishing. I am happy with my course, so we can go ahead and publish. So just click on the where it says publish. Here in the My Computer tab, we can publish course to an HTML5 format to share it online on your website or blog. However, today we, upload, we are uploading our course to the learning management system. And so we will choose the LMS tab. So here under size, we can set our course to fit browser window. And also I can select which SCORM version I want my course to publish to. So iSpring Free allows to publish courses to 1.2 and 2004. This setting depends on what version your LMS supports. Moodle supports only SCORM 1.2, so I will select 1.2. So if you are looking for more advanced SCORM completion settings, just click on Customize here. But we will go for default settings today. Now you can click Publish. Again, we will just have to wait for a while. So while waiting, you can just grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to be that long. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, today we will. So today that will be finished very quickly. Yay! So here it is. Here we have our SCOM package. Now let's go ahead and publish it to Moodle LMS. Let me tell you about Moodle LMS a little bit. 
So Moodle is a free open source LMS. However, some of extra features come at an additional fee. Please know that it requires a web server with PHP and a database to install it. So for today's session, I will use a Moodle demo account. Moodle provides an account that allows you to play with the LMS features for an hour. The fun part is that other people can be using the site at the same time with you. But the downside is that this demo site is reset to blank every hour. So I've already logged into my account. So now I can go ahead and publish my course. First of all, I will click on the on the gear in the top right corner and turn editing on. Then I will click on I will click add an activity or resource, choose SCOM package, click add. Here I will type the title of my quiz of my course <laughs> with a quiz. Here it is. Then I will scroll it down, click here. Choose Upload a File, click on Choose File, and quickly find my SCOM package. Here it is. Now I can click Upload this file. So we will have to have to wait a little bit again to upload it to Moodle. <laughs> Here it is. So I will not apply any Moodle settings to my course today, so I will just click on Save and Display. So here I have two modes, preview and normal. So I want to see the scores, so I will preview my course in normal mode. Let's click enter. So as you can see, I can have, so I have my course playing in Moodle LMS. Let's quickly go through our course. Here is our YouTube video. So here is our Wikipedia article. I can read it here and we can scroll it down. All right. So, and finally, here is our quiz. Now let's type in our details again. All right. The third question. As you can see, you've seen the uh, window which popped up, which says sending quiz results. So my results were sent to the email address. All right. It looks like our course is completed. Now let's see how well I performed. Let's get back to topic one and click on my course. As you can see, I completed it for 100%. All right, so we did a great job today. We repurposed our PowerPoint presentation for e-learning. We learned how to create quizzes. We published the course for the learning management system and uploaded it to a free Moodle LMS. So today we told you how you can try e-learning in your company without budget and see if it fits your company needs.
However, please note that iSpring Free is not intended for commercial use and also tech support is not provided. So, if e however, if e-learning becomes a successful project in your company and you feel like you need some more advanced features, you can try our top product iSpring Suite. It is an authoring tool that has even more question types, interactions, dialogue simulations, screen recordings, so audio and video narration. So, and also I'd like to mention that if you need an LMS, we have something to offer you. You are more than welcome to try iSpring Learn, our learning management system. And if you have any questions regarding our products, you're more than welcome to ask them at support at iSpringSolutions.com. We will be more than happy to help you. So I hope you enjoyed the webinar and learned some useful information. I wish you all the best in your e-learning projects. So now I think I can pass the mic to Paulina. Thanks a lot, Arena, for this wonderful presentation about iSpring Free and also how at no budget, literally, you can start e learning in your company or organization and produce pretty good looking content, to be honest. Um, so yeah, first of all, what I would like to say is that I shared a link where you guys can download iSpring free in the chat box. And also I shared a link to an article where you can read more about this product and its features. Uh, the second thing that I would like to go over is that um, I would like to mention just one more time, this webinar session is being recorded, so you will receive a link to a replay sometime after the webinar. However, somebody was also requesting a zip of the course that you, Arena, created, so I'm sure that we can add this to our after webinar mailing as well, so you guys will yes, receive sure. a link to um, a replay as well as the uh, this course that Arena has created during this presentation. Um, all right, so let's see if we have any questions left. Thank you very much. I didn't mention that I do have my colleague Anna helping us with the questions coming in the chat and she has taken care of them during Arena's presentation, but let's um, see if we have something left. So first of all, Arena, I have a question about the um, question type and quiz maker that you created with the knots uh -huh. and where you were inserting pictures of the knots. And the question was um, something about if you can insert not only pictures, but text as well in this type of question. Yes, sure. Let me show you. So um, here is my question. So to add a text, you just click here next to the question and insert your text. For example, let's quickly show you. Oops, I'm afraid that it doesn't match. Like this is the name of the ship, but it's not important. Let's me quickly pre let's preview that. <laughs> As you can see, I have a picture and the text also. So, and I can zoom the picture because I've chosen this option. Amazing. Thanks a lot for covering this as well. And we also had a question. I think that Anna covered it, but I would like just to um, say it out loud. Does the file always compress .zip to upload to Moodle? Yes, so actually when you publish your uh, course to SCOM format, it always comes as a zip file. However, if we open this file, you will see that there are so different files, so of the SCOM format. And uh, it doesn't matter what SCOM format you publish to 1.2 or 2004, that will always come as a zip file, which you can upload directly to your learning management system. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. And we have a question from Ted. I'm using iSpring Free already. Will it be updated without having to uninstall and reinstall? Can you advise? Yes, actually, yes, you can. Uh, so to update your product, just one second. Just go to, well, so you can download the version. So you can download Side and sorry, install it. Mm -hmm. Arena, you disappeared. Can you say uh, it just one more time? I'm sorry. So to update it, you can just click on help and download the updates here, or you can just download the um, 
so the installation file and install it over the existing product. So you will see I've up so updates and help mm -hmm. on the main open. Awesome. Thanks a lot for your answer. Uh, and the next question is from Vic. Mm -hmm. Can you also put equations in the quizzes? All right, just I will quickly show you. So it is possible, right? Yes, it is possible. Here it is. So on the main ribbon. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. So here are the equation interface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, just, I can insert some symbols, for example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for demoing it. Um, and Andrea is asking on the short answer question type, can the mm -hmm. response be free text? All right. So, um, is it possible that you just elaborate it a little bit, like? Um, so, just one second. So, uh, let me ask you. So, what uh, do you mean by free text? Like, um, that would be great if you can just add something on that, and I will be able to assist you better. Thanks. Um, yes, Andrea. Um, if I asked the question, what is your why? And I wanted the responder to add their response. So like type in sort of question. And the answer would be only that they completed it. Yeah, like type in, right? Yes, so if with this question, you can just type in your word and click submit. So if it corresponds to the acceptable answers here, then it will be considered as correct. Mm -hmm. But, uh, sorry, but they uh -huh. have to... Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, but what if all answers are different? Well, so um, so do you mean like um, so if the user gives a wrong answer, so if the so if the answer is just different, so then it is uh, so then it will be set as failed. For example, I can type it in with the mistake. So I think there is uh -huh. Andrea. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about the essay type of question where you ask some? When you, where you ask some question and then the user has to give you like a like the complete answer to what you've been asking. Yes. So this this is available in our yes. full version of product, yes. which is iSpring Suite. iSpring Suite. In iSpring Suite, there is an essay essay question. So uh, actually, well, I think we can take a look at it. Why not? So I will quickly add a quiz with iSpring Suite, and we will see that. Just one second. Mm -hmm. And in this type of question, you do not only have to import just one word. It can be a phrase as well. Yes, correct? sure. Sure. Here it is. If you add an essay question with iSpring Suite, you will uh, be able to insert any so, amount of text. So it is uh, not somehow limited. So a user can just write a free form essay. So that's mm -hmm. it. Thanks a but lot. But this is available in a sprint suite. <laughs> right. And actually, let me share the link with you guys as well, just in case you would like to check out this tool for yourself. So iSpring <laughs> Suite authoring tool. And I would also like to add a link to our LMS so that you have yeah. everything um, available at your fingertips. Okay, there we go. Okay, so actually at this moment, it looks like we have covered all the questions that have been sent to us. And mm -hmm. I would like to thank everyone for giving this wonderful presentation. And I hope that you guys now can 
um, see how easy it is to get started with e-learning and actually decide if it will be a fit for your organization. And I would also like to ask you if you see how how you how you will be able to use it right now. If you can share with us in the question box just very briefly if you see a way that you will be able to use iSpring free, that would be amazing. That would be great. And while you're doing this, I would also like to invite you to become a part of our webinar series. Um, I am going to share with you a link to a section on our website where you will be able to see what webinars are going to take place really soon and actually see the past sessions. So come go check it out right now. This will be amazing. Let's cover just one more question for today's session and then we will wrap up. So Afra is asking, is it possible to make the quiz interactive as a PowerPoint? Well, so um, let me quickly ask you. So uh, do you mean uh, like creating a quiz uh, in PowerPoint or like um, or you are talking about the quiz previewed with PowerPoint? So if the quiz is previewed with PowerPoint, unfortunately, that will um, show up just as this picture. So if you preview that, so that will appear just as this picture because so to launch, um, so any content created with iSpring, you will need to use iSpring preview. So that's it. Thanks, Arena, and I hope offer it answers your question okay so we do not have any other questions left at this moment so i would like to thank our presenter arena for doing this great session and also everybody for joining us today thanks guys for tuning in and we hope that you found this webinar helpful i would also like to thank anna for taking care of the questions as always, you did a wonderful job. And yes, I hope to see you at our next webinar series. And I wish everyone a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye, Arena. Bye, Anna. Bye, Paulina. Bye, Anna. Goodbye, everyone. I was very happy to be here with you today. Goodbye.